How to Be the Millionaire Next Door. In the book of the same name, Thomas Stanley and William Danko challenge ideas about common perceptions on wealth. It's all about net assets, which is wealth minus your liabilities. So it's not about showing off something that you bought on a credit card. And specifically, they talk about how people living in large houses with fancy cars are actually drowning in debt and that someone who lives modestly in a small house with an old but well looked after car is much more likely to have a seven figure bank account. So the finance analyst who's been with the company for many years and maxed out his pension is much more likely to be a millionaire than the flashy young finance director who thinks he earns so much money that he doesn't need to save any money for his retirement. So your house is the biggest expenditure item you're likely to ever come across, but it's not about spending the most that you can on a house, maxing out a mortgage, what's the maximum you can afford. Bigger houses mean bigger bills. And as Robert Kiyosaki said in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, your house is a liability and not an asset because it actually eats up cash in terms of its maintenance. What you also have to do if you want to be a millionaire is to declutter your house. That will make a small home seem a lot bigger and it'll also mean that you can like, find your car keys more quickly. Your network is your net worth. So you can have bad friends where you're just always trying to keep up with them in terms of their purchases and how they seem to be progressing in life. So that means that you're forever buying fancy cars or fancy watches. But the thing is, you need to get people that are doing interesting things, maybe starting up new businesses. It's how they invest, how they look at the world. So you might need to hang out with slightly different people to truly become a millionaire. And you can find these people on maybe Facebook groups, maybe LinkedIn groups, maybe events on Meetup or Eventbrite. And if you get the right people in your circle of friends, then your outlook will change and what you do will also change. So if I had like Stephen Bartlett as a close friend, I'm sure I'd have a much more effective TikTok account, for example. Millionaires don't get bogged down in debt. Low interest rates were great for a while, but they don't last. So if a millionaire was involved in property, they might have some debt on their buy to let properties, but they wouldn't have debt on their main residence to keep the debt to equity exposure manageable, such that if interest rates did rise, they would have a plan as to how to mitigate that. Millionaires aren't afraid to invest in themselves. And there's a thing called the dark side of financial independence retire early. And the problem with these people is that they're so obsessed with savings, that they won't invest in themselves. They also sometimes have a limited entrepreneurial spirit, whereas true millionaires will try out new business ideas with limited risk capital. Millionaires will have a learning mindset. They'll learn how to invest. They'll learn about pension tax breaks, minimizing costs. They'll take control. They'll assume responsibility for their money, educating themselves, automating investments so that it comes straight out of their salary and into their pension so that it's not a choice. Millionaire Next Door reads sensible books, listens to the best podcasts and watches the best YouTube channels. And they don't get too blown around by various bits of news and speculation. Millionaire Next Door won't be afraid to change their strategy. If a business isn't working, they'll exit it. If they don't like their career, they will invest in themselves, retrain and get a new career so they're not stuck in a job they don't like with limited prospects for progression. The millionaire next door would play to his strengths, working out whether he's good with numbers, good at organizing and leading people, maybe good dealing with people one-to-one, -one, understanding their needs, so they're great in terms of sales. So Carol Dweck came up with the idea of a growth mindset, which means that basically you can learn and you can progress and maybe it's astrophysics or maybe it's Canva or ChatGPT, but you will take an action orientation towards improving your life rather than having a fixed mindset and just feeling like 
you dealt a set of cards and you're stuck with them. The millionaire next door will have plans and goals. They'd have something like a retirement calculator so they could work out how their wealth might map out over time. And importantly, they would celebrate success along the way. So they're rewarding themselves for all the hard work they're taking. So it's not a total chore. So hopefully I've shown you that becoming the millionaire next door is not a result of luck or extraordinary circumstances. It's a deliberate and disciplined approach to managing your finances and your life by living below your means, prioritizing investing and adopting a long term mindset. You can build sustainable wealth over time. Anyone can adopt these principles and achieve their own version of financial success. It's not about how much you earn, but much more how effectively you manage and grow what you have.